friends, um, Trevor Hudson writes that there is one subject that we all uh, tend to avoid. And strangely, he says it's not the subject of sex or money or politics or death or even religion. Uh, rather, it is the topic of our weaknesses. He says we are seldom prepared to discuss this aspect of our lives honestly, uh, even with our loved ones um, and, and our close friends. He goes on to say that there are a number of reasons for this. Firstly, uh, society tends to think negatively of people we consider to be weak-willed, weak need or weak-minded. Um, society regards them as the losers, the ones who are usually defeated, uh, the unfortunates who lack what it takes to succeed. And of course, we do not want to be thought of in that way. Another reason is that from an early age, uh, we are taught that we have to be strong, especially um, uh, for those who are males. He says that the, the message is clear. Uh, the successful are those who are in control, who have it all together. Even if we are not on top of things, it becomes important to pretend that we are. And so we are continually trying to look stronger or smarter or more successful than we really are. Uh, we cannot mention our weaknesses too loudly. A third reason that we don't talk about our weaknesses, quite simply, uh, that we are often blind to our own weaknesses. Um, we see the weaknesses of others quickly and clearly, um, but we don't always notice them in ourselves, or we deny them or try to rationalize them away. And so Trevor Hudson says that the truth is that we have a remarkable capacity for self-delusion and denial. He says that um, when we are confronted about our failures, we say something like, I don't know what came over me. I just wasn't myself. And we do that to distance ourselves from whatever it was uh, we may have done or said. Uh, quite frankly, he says, what comes over us are our weaknesses, whatever those may be. And if one could go back in time to our more primitive ancestors living in caves and fighting saber-toothed tigers and defending themselves against other marauding tribes, one of the root causes for not admitting our weaknesses is pure survival. Uh, the fear is that if we, if we admit to our weaknesses, um, we fear that we may not survive, that someone will take advantage of us, and we might in some way be annihilated. But the truth is that sometimes our attempts to deny our weaknesses uh, to ourselves and to others um, in order to look strong, it begins to backfire on us. Uh, there comes a point when living in denial of our weaknesses becomes counterproductive, as those covered up weaknesses begin to undermine our well-being and our shared life with others. And so Trevor Hudson writes that uh, there is good news uh, that we, we can begin to live beyond our weaknesses. But before we can really begin to experience this, there is one precondition. He says we first have to admit our weaknesses. And this is the wisdom of the first step in the 12-step program. Step one, we admitted we were powerless over some area of our lives that our lives had become unmanageable. It is the humble admission of having a weakness. Uh, Trevor Hudson says it is wisdom that comes straight from the pages of the biblical text and can be, and can be summarized like this. The first step towards change involves a courageous admission of our weaknesses. And when we are unable to take this first step, he says, we cut ourselves off from experiencing the power to change from the inside. How can you change if you deny that there is a problem or a need to change at all? What are the weaknesses that we struggle with that can undermine our lives and make our lives feel unmanageable? Uh, firstly, Trevor Hudson says there is the weakness of the will, having the sense of wanting to do something, but somehow not being able to muster up the willpower to actually do it. Secondly, there is the weakness of our addictive or compulsive behavior, um, behavior that can often provide short-term pleasure or comfort, 
but that undermines our long-term well-being and can sabotage our ability to achieve long-term goals and happiness. Thirdly, there is the, the weakness of habitual um, wrongdoing. Um, deep down, says Trevor, we all know the difference between right and wrong and between that which leads to wholeness and that which doesn't, but often our habitual energies lead us away from the good and the wholesome, and habits can be very hard to change. Fourthly, he says, there is the weakness of our negative thoughts and feelings, perhaps a continual sense of worry or overwhelming anxiety, a feeling of worthlessness or fear or anger or aggression. And many of these feelings are connected with often forgotten traumas, both big and small, from our, our childhood. Trevor Hudson says that one of the most damaging of all our feelings is resentment and the sense that we are owed something. The Apostle Paul, who on the road to Damascus came to see more clearly his own weaknesses, expresses some of these dimensions of our human weaknesses when he writes of himself in the book of Romans, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. What happens when we fail to admit our weaknesses? Uh, on the one hand, Trevor Hudson says, we find ourselves living a lie. We hide behind masks of competence and self-sufficiency, and we pretend that we are okay. We become actors in the drama of our lives, playing roles that are far removed from who we really are on the inside. And in consequence, people around us begin to feel uh, cut off from us, um, like we have put up a barrier uh, so that others can't reach us or get close to us. And, and this in turn leads to us feeling isolated from any real or meaningful contact and openness with other people, always pretending that we have it together can make for a very, very lonely life. Secondly, um, as already suggested, not admitting our weaknesses can begin to undermine, undermine our lives. They can make them even more destructive, especially when they become hidden secrets. Um, Trevor says that those in the recovery movement remind us that we are as sick as our secrets. And so unacknowledged weaknesses can have a scary way of gradually taking over our lives, robbing us of our joy, our freedom, and our peace of mind. And so the 12-step program reminds us that admitting the reality of our weaknesses is the first and most important step on the journey towards change. Without it, there can be little or no progress. Admitting our weaknesses, paradoxically, takes enormous courage, honesty, humility, and strength. Admitting our weaknesses is also not a once-off event. We may become aware of one weakness today that we're willing to admit, but in a few years' time, we may slowly become aware of other weaknesses that we may not have seen or may not yet have been able to acknowledge. And so Trevor's, Trevor Hudson says that if we wish to overcome our weaknesses, or one could say even just to learn to live in a more wholesome and balanced way with our weaknesses, then naming our weaknesses is a powerful act. And in doing so, he suggests we should try to be as specific as we can be. Naming our weaknesses brings these hidden struggles into the open, uh, in, into our own consciousness as well, and, and, and can make us help us to connect uh, with others who struggle in a similar way. Um, uh, writing them in a diary or a journal and getting them onto paper can help us to see them more clearly um, so that we have a uh, more clear insight into what, what's really going on. When we do so, Trevor says that we begin to discover one, that, that, that one of the greatest secrets on the spiritual journey, uh, and that is our weakness, that in our weakness often lies our greatest strength. Because in admitting our weakness, it can open us to, to finding help, 
help from others, and most especially, it can open us up to divine resources. Uh, it can open us to a power greater than our small ego-driven selves and open us to divine resources that God has placed deep within us. Uh, this was the Apostle Paul's discovery, uh, who Trevor Hudson describes as a recovering sinner. He, uh, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10, If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If admitting your weakness might be too difficult, an easier place to start might simply be admitting that you need a change. Admitting that in some area of your life, things are just not working and they're not as you would want them to be. I need to change such and such because currently what I'm doing is no longer working for me. It is undermining my deeper joy and happiness. And so what area of your life is no longer working for you? What area of your life is beginning to undermine your well-being? Can you name it? Can you admit that it is not working? Can you take the further step and admit or name a weakness behind what is not working? Change cannot happen until we admit that something needs to change. And one of the quickest ways is to name exactly what it is that needs changing and the weakness that underlies that. I close with song lyrics from a contemporary Australian singer called Sia. She writes or sings, "World, I want to leave you a better uh, world. I want to leave you better. I want my life to matter. I'm afraid I have no purpose here. I watch the news on TV, abandon myself daily. I'm afraid to let you see the real me." Rain it falls, rain it falls, pouring on me. And the rain it falls, rain it falls, sowing the seeds of love and hope, love and hope. We don't have to stay stuck in the weeds. And the chorus, have I the courage to change? Have I the courage to change? Have I the courage to change today? May God bless you as you uh, uh, allow these thoughts to uh, continue to um, work uh, in your mind and in your heart. Amen.